So Rich, how can my real estate photography business grow and stay on the cutting edge? I'm glad you brought that up, Brian, by including hdphotohub.com. You just upload your photos and your clients will get a property website, social media flyers, and videos all automatically. Wow, that seems pretty easy. What do I do to get started? It is easy. And all you have to do is register today at hdphotohub.com. And if you're using the referral code shooting spaces, you get your first property marketing kit absolutely free. Free? Yeah, free. HD Photo Hub is where great photos become a powerful marketing kit. Again, that's hdphotohub.com. Welcome to Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. Discussions on gear, technique, industry news, and interviews with the best in the business. Now, here are your hosts, Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Welcome to Shooting Spaces. This is Brian from New York. And Rich Baum from Sacramento, California. And we want to thank you for tuning in to another fantastic episode. And Rich, you uh, have the bright colors. You look like, you know, summer in California. You're fitting the part. It went from winter to summer, baby. And we're up to uh, 90s. And uh, uh, I didn't have time to catch my breath. There's no in between here. And uh, it's just hot. <laughs> That's it. But yeah. I'm wearing my, uh, for those of you out there that know what Ren Spooner is, reverse print uh, Hawaiian shirts, it's the real deal. I, uh, I've got my Ren Spooner Hawaiian shirt on. So yeah, howly, uh, howly hello. Yeah, exactly. No, we had some <laughs> nice weather too. We had uh, 75 yesterday. I even clocked up to 79 when I got out of my shoots yesterday and um, we had about 73 today. So um And you had uh, quite a few shoots yesterday. You were, oh, yeah, I had three. A, uh, <laughs> three shoots, three shoots yesterday, and three shoots the day before. And I know people are just laughing at me and saying, and "Your shoots are not. It's not apples to apples, though. It's no. not. I did video and I did um, photo and a bunch of stuff. So it was uh, drone. Did yeah. drone. So they were all time consuming shoots. They were you know eight nine hour days. But um, like I said, I shouldn't really complain because there are people here that shoot five a day and <laughs> five a day, five days a week. So um, I guess I shouldn't complain with my six yeah. and two days, but yeah. I took today off. So it wasn't so bad. Hung out with the family. Perfect. Perfect. Right. Yeah. And I'm, uh, I am just uh, getting ready for really busy uh, tomorrow and Friday. And I have my First wedding on Monday, a Monday wedding. What the heck's up with that? So I got to drive an hour and a half to go do a wedding on Monday. And then uh, I got my, uh, my, my workshop sold out. So I got that coming up in May. That's awesome. And, uh, Congratulations. I'm, I'm very, very happy. And I uh, get to play around with uh, some really cool people and go have a good time. So stoked. Really awesome. Excited. That's what we say in California. Stoked. Stoked. Yeah. All right, cool. So there's a couple of things I want to talk about before we get to our episode. Um, number one um, is for people that are interested in getting their Part 107 drone license. So obviously everyone knows I'm a drone pilot. I have my Part 107, but I just recently started talking to a company called Drone Launch Academy who offers teaching courses, video courses for people who are studying for their Part 107 test, and I uh, was telling them about the podcast and asked them if they can offer our listeners anything. And they were kind enough to give our listeners $50 off the course. And I think the course only costs 200 so it's about 25% off, which is a pretty sweet deal. So they're extending this offer to all our listeners if you're interested in taking a Part 107 study course. And what they were telling me, the good thing about this course is it never expires. So um, you'll have this course forever. They're in the process of launching a recurrent course for people who have to take the renewal. I just took mine last month. If you have to take the renewal course after two years, um, you don't have to know as much information. So they're going to have a renewal course. Um, I, they didn't tell me an exact date, but I, I would imagine before the end of this year, they're going to have that available. Um, but even if you need to take the renewal course, I'm sure you can still watch the original and it's going to cover everything, obviously. So if anyone's interested in the part 107 course, go to dronelaunchacademy.com slash shooting spaces, and you will get $50 off your order to the course. So I figured I'd mention that they were nice enough to share that with us. And I figured we'd extend that out to everybody else. Awesome. Awesome. So there you go, Rich, when you're ready to study for your part 107, you know where to go to. 
I'm gonna gonna do it. Um, but I've, I'm pretty happy uh, hiring my friends to do it. So I'm okay. Hey, with it. Whatever works. Yeah. The other thing we were speaking about, Rich, is because a lot of people are posting their images on Instagram lately and have been tagging us. Um, and we appreciate it. And we get the work. Um, we get to see their work because they've been tagging shooting spaces on Instagram. But we figured, hey, if a bunch of these people are tagging us on their images, why not start sharing those posts? So we figured hey, you know, we're out there to try to help you get better. So um, if you're posting your images to Instagram, either tag us in your comment or tag us on the image and, um, or use hashtag shooting spaces, any one of the three ways you can do it. And we will start um, sharing with our viewers some of your work so people can see other work out there. Um, see people that are just starting out, see people that are advanced. And, you know, Rich, I don't have to tell you, it's always inspiration when you see other people's work and in, whether it's composition or lighting styles or whatever it is, it always inspires you to do better and get better. So we figured we'd try it. So if you have some images you're posting, I know I post daily. Um, if you're posting some images, just tag uh, hashtag shooting spaces or tag us in the image or tag us in, uh, in the comment, put our handle shooting spaces and uh, we'll try to reshare that post for everyone to see. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, I'm going to be asking uh, somebody uh, in the future to come on and we're going to do more uh, social media podcasts because that's something that is really uh, a nice topic right now and, and something that we can all use. I think that, uh, you know, we, we, we Instagram has been great for me. I have some firsthand experience with getting a little bit of work off of Instagram and uh, it's been great. I really enjoy doing it. Yeah. And Rich, we have our webinar, our first webinar in two days. Awesome. I'm so excited. Sold out. Um, our first webinar is sold out. How crazy yeah. is that? I, I'm very pleased. And it just shows that I'm going to be, it's very interesting to see if it's just the topic, uh, uh, demystifying twilight photography, but um, we'll see. And it, it's a, the beginning of a great, great thing and a new idea of way, ways to uh, further help people get better and learn and instruct and things like that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to learning both of your, both of your <laughs> methods. You know, my method is very similar to yours um, for the very few twilights that I do, but I'm looking forward to definitely learning your method and obviously Matthew's more advanced technique. So, um, you know, if you missed out on this webinar, we definitely apologize, but there will be more in the future, 100%. So yeah. just, you know, remember if you want to attend any of our future webinars, <clears throat> don't wait for the last minute and register early because they, you know, this one sold out a couple days before. So, and I'm really excited to see Matthew's uh, work workflow because I used to do a bit of light painting and I, I haven't for a while because I didn't have a great uh, workflow and uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing that. So it's going to be a lot of fun to compare the two. All right, cool. So, something so, for everyone. Exactly. Yeah. So what we got going on today? We there, have Brian? an Ask the Guys from our good old buddy and even more so your good old buddy. Peter Lyons, who we've Peter. had, yeah, we've had on before on the show, and I know you speak to him. You said uh, almost daily, and I know he's <laughs> out in your area. So uh, he sent us a question. He was nice enough, and he told, he said it, and he listens to every episode. So let me go ahead and play that for you now. Hey guys, this is Peter Lyons from the San Francisco Bay Area. My website is peterlyonsphoto.com. The two of you are totally tearing it up with this podcast. I never miss an episode. Thanks so much for the hard work you're both investing to bring it to us. My question for you today is regarding before shoots. Sometimes I'll be contacted by a client who wants a relatively quick and dirty and cheap shoot of a location that they can use later to contrast it with how it will look after remodeling and renovation. It's a perfectly reasonable request, but I don't really have an established product or workflow for this, so I wing it. I break from my multiple speed light process, shoot fast and all ambient, cut them a break on cost, but then since I don't normally shoot all ambient, I don't have a post-production workflow for it either, so I wind up spending more time in post trying to fix the all ambient shots and deliver work that I don't really want to call mine, and I wonder whether my client would have done just as well to shoot it on their phone. So help me out, guys. How can I approach these shoots better? Wow. That was a handful. That's a, that's a unique one, I'll tell you. Leave it to yeah. Peter. <laughs> By the way, Peter, if you if you haven't seen Peter's work, go check out Peter Lyon's work. Uh, he's one of the good old boys, and he's been doing this a long time. And he is uh, he's just one of the tops. And so, not only that, but he's a great guy, and he also wears Hawaiian shirts. So. 
There okay. You go. Um, so Rich, do you, have you shot any before shots for builders or been asked this before? I've done one. And one. I, I will lend my um, expert well, I've done my zero. experience. So You've done zero. So. I don't know if this asks the guys if we're going to be able to answer it as well as we should, but you, I can definitely give you my, my opinion, but you definitely have a leg up on me having done one before. So I just wish, God, I've, I feel like leaving. Can we leave the, uh, the images in our show notes? We're, I'd love people to see this. It was freak, freaking bizarre. No, the before and the after images. Oh, okay. I'm more concerned with the before images. Okay. Yeah, send okay. me some. We'll put them in the show notes. Let's see if we can do Because you got to see this. Okay. <laughs> I used to shoot for a guy, and I don't shoot for him anymore. Great guy. But uh, for whatever reason, um, I, I just think uh, he, he, he went on another path. Um, and he used to do some flips. And they were doing very successful flips. And it was really interesting because all the flips were – um, the same, the same uh, sinks and refrigerators and tile, they had a formula and it was great. But I used to shoot a lot of their stuff after they did it. So one day they called me and they said, hey, we got something really different. I don't know if you're going to want to do it or I don't know how you're going to do it, but come on over, check this out. We want you to shoot it before and then we want you to come back uh, in three months or four months and shoot it after. And that's the scenario. So I went to go check out the before flip. and. Let's just say it looked like not a Hiroshima. It was bags of garbage. It was broken walls. It was just disgusting. And it was just, oh, it was so icky and awful. And it was almost like, you know, you want to say, I, I can't do this. But he was a good client. And um, he, he said, you know, this is something different. So I said, okay, I'll try it. Now, I shot it, but I don't want to say I shot it differently. I, I shot, and that's kind of what I'm leading up to, Peter. Um, I shot it basically the same way I would shoot, where I could maybe <laughs> get my tripod in between the bags of garbage. But um, I kept in mind uh, the angles. I actually made notes on the angles in my mind. I, I shot certain angles that I knew I'd come back. And even though they were going to knock down some walls and do some different things, it was important to be able to see the similar uh, thing. You could see that because sometimes when you do before and after, it doesn't look like the same house. Anyway, I shot it um, probably with one more of a light on the stick because I, I, I didn't want to really go out there and put a light out there. It was just it was pretty bad. Um, but I shot normal way. I shot flambient and, uh, you know, give it my all. And um, then I came back three or four or five months later and shot it again. And it was a very interesting experience. And when I shot it, I didn't shoot it any, really any differently. I shot all the same angles. And the, uh, I guess what I'm getting to, Peter, is I don't think you need to shoot it differently. I think that you should not try to make it look like a, a, a make it look like an inferior photographer, I think that you should make because I've always been extremely strong on never post photos in groups of from other photographers trying to say you know oh look look at this garbage and how this is wrong and this is right you know I, I'd be doing this and that. never put yourself down, never put yourself above, you know, try and try and uh, keep it a level playing field. So I would say just go out and shoot the way you would shoot. But remember, like I did, I would say, keep the ideas of, and you could actually ask the guy, or ask the owner of the house, are you going to be tearing down walls? Just any ideas you can get. But I don't really think, because I know when you change up your shooting style, uh, it takes longer than it would normally take. I mean, you could actually hire a, a mediocre photographer. But again, I just think that it's something that you could do and you would see enough difference. I don't think you need to shoot it poorly. I just think that they can, the client or potential buyer can see the difference and see the value in the remodel. So uh, that's my two cents worth. I don't think you have to change your shooting style or anything. I think you just shoot it one way and then you go back in when it's uh, remodeled and you shoot it the other way. And in That's that me. sense, the workflow would be the same. But he was, I think he was asking, I have to go back and re-listen, but asking about, do you charge any less or something because it's a before new shoot movie. and you're saying, you know, charge the same, your fees are your fees and do it the same. And 
have the work look professional. And if there's garbage there, there's garbage there. It'll only make their after image look better at the end of the day. So um, go out and just tackle it the same and don't do any different. You know, um, to me, a lot of the part about charging on shoots is just to get me there. I remember mm -hmm. when I was started to shoot weddings, uh, I talked to a very successful wedding photographer and I said, well, what do you charge? And he basically goes, I don't get out of bed for under $2,000 or something like that. So I just think that, you know, you got to charge the same amount of money. You're not going to, you know, you can't. And if they want to pay you less to do it, I wouldn't do it. I think you've mm -hmm. got to set your standards and, and, you know, Peter, you're one of the best. So I think you can make it work. But again, I don't think you need to try harder to make it look worse. I think that it is what it is. And maybe if you can't, if that doesn't work for them, maybe it's the wrong photographer. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, you know, you definitely have me thinking now because I was going to say something a little bit different, but what you're saying makes a lot of sense. And, you know, obviously we didn't have so much time to really think this over. But, um, I'll, you know, I'll tell you what I was going to say, although, you know, now that you've kind of gave me your opinion, I'm kind of leaning that way. But what I was going to say is, um, you know, Peter said shooting, you know, he shoots ambient just to change up his workflow and make the work look a little different. And I don't want to say make the work look better or worse, but I was going to say um, maybe go with, you know, an infused type of workflow. So the work still looks good and it still looks professional, um, but it doesn't look as good. So that'll make the after images look stronger, but it's not like they're receiving, you know, images that were shot on their iPhone or images from a crappy photographer. You know, if you know how to use Infuse properly, you can make Infuse images look really, really good. And, you know, we've all seen images that were shot with Infuse. I've posted a lot of them very often on my Instagram. Um, there are guys out there that post all the time on the Facebook groups that only use Infuse, um, you know, We've had Gary Castle on our on our program who has his run and gun workflow for his um, lower end stuff. He uses Infuse and some of his work is really, really phenomenal. So, you know, you can do some really, really nice stuff with that. Um, and it's instead of 100%, it's maybe 85 or 90. So it still looks really professional and really look good, but it's not, it's not you know, all the way there. So when you do deliver those final flash images, um, you know, they look even better. And that being said, I mean, as far as workflow, you know, an infused workflow is not, I mean, it's a little quicker, but not much different than when you're doing flambient. So, um, yeah, when you're, when, you know, Lightroom is infusing your images, a lot of that's automated and you can kind of step away from the computer for a little bit and come back. But, you know, you still have to go in, you still have to put your finish, you have to do all the work beforehand. I don't know, most people, or they should do their adjustments beforehand, whether it's white balance, stacking the images, all that stuff. And then after you got to go in, put all your funny finishing touches on them. You know, anybody that's used Infuse knows that the images come out really flat and ugly looking. So you have to go in, you have to put your finishing touches on there. You have to straighten your vertical. So there's still a lot of work involved. So the workflow or amount of work you have to do after isn't much different. So, you know, to Peter, to answer your question, I probably wouldn't charge any different. Probably wouldn't charge any different, but if you wanted to change it up and make your after images look even stronger, I would probably, or what I was going to say to do was probably deliver an infuse type of workflow. So everything still looks really good and professional, but um, not as good. You look like you're about to say something, Rich. Well, I, or I, know, I was going to, I was going to sneeze. Oh, I'm always disagreeing with you. I may not okay. say it, but I'm always. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I, I think the bottom line is for me. I, I wouldn't want like uh, worse pictures. I want the renovation to speak for itself. And you got a good point. I mean, infuse like uh, infuse gooey, man. That is the fastest thing on earth. And uh, you could go in there and shoot that. So yeah, I'm sure you could could do it a lot quicker. But I just want to say I, I had a, a brainstorm going on in a um, small one. But uh, you know, I, I think that that might not be a bad idea for people out there in podcast land to come up with another offering. If you have a, an agent or a, a, no, a, a builder, somebody that does flips or renovations, suggest to them that you will come in before and do a before and an after. And that way you're going to get an extra shoot out of it. And maybe you charge less, you charge the same amount of money, but you structure it differently. Because I'm a big fan of just 
make your client think they're getting a better deal by rewording it. But you may just want to do that. And, and you know, that's not a bad idea. You know, somebody's going to do a flip, get in touch with them and say, hey, I'll come in and shoot it and let me shoot it after and I'll give it to you for this price. And uh, yeah, maybe that is the answer to go in there and shoot it and infuse. And, and if you could get in and out really quick, charge less for that and you, you're all winning. So maybe that's well, it. if you can shoot the same angles too, you can get one of those cool little uh, WordPress plugin sliders where you can slide the before and afters. Yeah, you don't think you could do it close enough, though. Well, that's gonna be pretty close. Okay. But yeah, yeah. No, it's, you have to be kind of dead on, but yeah. You did that for the uh, <clears throat> for the for webinar, the, uh, webinar, and I love that. I, I actually before and after. find out how to do that because I love the uh, slide it. I think it's great. But pretty I'm cool. not a big I'm not a big fan. Of like there was a guy oh he used to drive me crazy in in the groups and in PFRE and I haven't heard from him in a long long time but uh, it was funny Scott DeBose and me used to just shake our head because he was in our area but I'm not mentioning any names but he made a big deal on his website to go do you want your pictures to look like this or look like this <laughs> and like to me that is the worst how in the world can you be trying to sell your stuff by putting somebody else down or making somebody else's so work that's what he was doing he really bad. other people's he work. would take really crappy pictures and then he take really good pictures and i'm like are you kidding me that is so inherently wrong in my opinion well i feel like if you're going to do that and like take the crappy ones yourself on your iphone or something because how many realtors are taking pictures with your iphone and say you know do you want your pictures to look like this and then write a caption underneath taken with phone like most okay. realtors okay. like most realtors or, you know, take it like this with yeah. professional. But yeah, if they're using someone else's quote unquote crappy images, that's it's that's a slippery slope. Even if your own if you're making it look like somebody else's pictures, I don't know. It's like deceiving to me. But uh, you know, whatever. That's that's well look, you know what uh, what comes around goes around. And if you're uh, <laughs> if you're doing stuff that's not ethical or a little shady if you want to call it, it's gonna come back one day and just bite you in the ass. Well, have you ever, um, <laughs> have you ever, I'm doing, a, I'm editing a design shoot right now and uh, not as we speak, but this is a few picture minutes. you posted earlier. It was really nice. Oh, it, it's, it's going right back and re getting re-edited, man. Oh. oh my God. Someone pointed out that I, I took out a, almost the global colors and everything. It's all screwed up. It's great to post sometimes um, in a group before you deliver because you can get a third uh, it, it took me longer to do this one image than it took me to do a whole house. Let's just say that. And I'm in the, I get in the hole, you know, the time suck hole where it just takes you forever and ever. And you got glass and reflections and colors, color cast. But I just think that it's really, really um, important to, uh, you know, just try and do your, do your best work. But, uh, you know, I, I just can't, uh, I, I can't really speak for, uh, what Peter's going through. So you just do what it, what ethically is. But if you ever get in a hole, like you, you're, you're doing something, like even cloning out a light socket because it's a design shoot, I'll sit there for like two, three minutes go, oh, should I do that? And I'm going, oh, I got this person in my head and this person in my head. And it's a terrible thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Start getting... No, it's a tough call. I usually, I do it only if it's significantly distracting. Um, if I go to the image and that's kind of where my eye is drawn, I take it out. But, but you wouldn't do that for a real estate shoot. No, I wouldn't bother. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying ethics are really, really important uh, depending on what you're doing. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't encourage anybody to do something that's unethical. Correct. Yeah, well, in real estate it's different. You know, people are getting what they see and people like, are expecting to get what they see. You know, when you're doing a design shoot, you know, your your point is to focus on you know, what the designer did, whether in the yeah. bathroom, it's, it's tile work or, um, you know, vanities or countertops and stuff like totally that. Different. And not where the electrician had to put the socket because that's where the beams were. So, you know, it, it's a different, yeah, it's a different, whole different game. And I don't mind taking that stuff out on a design shoot. Did you hear, now I'm not a big one on following MLS rules or whatever. Did you hear that there, there's scuttlebutt about them changing a lot of things and each MLS is different, but there, I heard talk about that they are going to uh, not allow sky replacements. And uh, I mean, all these crazy things, which I don't know how they would figure it out. Well, yeah, I uh, haven't heard that yet. I mean, I've, I've heard the talk about it in the groups, but I haven't yeah. heard that yet from my MLS. Like you said, if you're good at it, 
then first of all, they're not going to know. I don't, I don't see how they're going to know that it was a sky replacement. Secondly, um, ethically, I mean, I guess I agree with not touching anything that's in the house, but the sky is the sky, <laughs> you know, it's going to look different today and tomorrow and the day after, and literally every day for the rest of our lives, the sky is going to look different. <laughs> so yeah. now when uh, you do sky replacements, do you always a hundred percent take into consideration the actual direction that the sunset will be i fudge it a little bit on twilights you mean yeah uh yeah sky replacements yeah well i do sky replacements on regular exteriors also no no but i mean um, in 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 a in a twilight situation twilights i try to the best i can yeah. um and if i can't what i try to do is change the direction of the light coming on the house using um you know like curved layers and masking and stuff like that so if the only good sky that really looks good on the house is kind of the wrong direction. First of all, what I always like to do, um, I guess we're getting into a little bit about um, Twilights now. We're, I'm guess, so excited. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what I usually do is, first thing I do is I sample colors from the sky that I'm replacing and put color overlays of that color onto the house also. Right. So the sky, so the house is reflecting the color of the sky and it looks a little more natural. So if my sky that I'm using is very purple, and the original shot has no purple in the on the house then i will sample a col that purple color from the sky um, make a new layer with color blend mode and then just selectively mask at like five percent opacity just a little purple on there just to kind of get that reflection and make it a little more natural um, and then in the same sense i'll try to use you know curves adjustment layers masking too to kind of change the direction of the light a little bit to kind of fit the sky enough where it blends naturally with the way I shot it and um, doesn't look like I faked the light. So yeah. a little bit of work, but nothing compared to what our friend Matthew does. Well, I, <laughs> I look forward to interjecting your experience too during our webinar. That's going to be yeah, a lot of like fun. Like I said, I don't do it often. I think last summer, I, I don't do anything during the winter um, in New York, but I think last summer I did five twilights. Maybe that's it. I actually posted them all last, like two but weeks But they ago. were great twilights. I posted them all like two weeks ago. I was like, here's everything I shot from a Twilight last summer. And the truth of the matter is I just don't, I don't push it. Um, when I get calls for it, I don't turn it down, but I don't really try to push it because it's just really hard for me after a day of shooting to get back up at seven o'clock when I just ate dinner with the family <laughs> and all that and just go out and do another uh, shoot. Welcome um, to my life. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, look, your kids are older and out of the house now, but I'm in a different boat. So, <laughs> so I you, was shooting them bills, when mine were little. Pay. Yeah, no, it's, it's tough. And, you know, I don't want to get into too much Twilight stuff, uh, but yeah, it is something that uh, takes you away from your family and your life and you should get uh, compensated for it. So anyway, yeah. that's good stuff. All right. Well, Peter, we got off on a tangent like we always seem to do on these <laughs> Ask the Guys, um, but it's all good. So thank you for your question. Sorry we couldn't be of a little more help to you, but um, you asked a question that Rich has done once and I have never done. But hopefully we were able to shed our opinions on the situation and definitely uh, follow up with us and let us know how it panned out. Yeah, and I'm going to definitely try and find those before and after shots. And if we could maybe post just two Two shots, that'd be great. By the way, because you got to see this house. <laughs> I want. I want to uh, say I forgot the guy's name, and I probably should have looked this up before. But I remember, we had an ask the guys a couple of maybe two months ago about a guy who did a job job for somebody that was ninety days late on pain and who was struggling to get paid. And what should we do? So I apologize that I forgot your name, but he did send us a follow up message that he got paid about a week after we re we released that episode. So. It did work out for him, and uh, if you've listened to our episodes, you do know um, what I'm talking about, hopefully, and if you didn't, go back and, and listen to some of the previous Ask the Guys, but he did get paid from that client, so yeah. happy ending, what we'd like to hear. <laughs> yes, happy endings. Um, <laughs> great. So, Brian, uh, what's going on? Uh, we're uh, running out of time, and we yeah, we're running low on time. Yeah. yeah, so um, that's it. We're running low on time, but we want to thank everybody for listening. And uh, as usual, just subscribe to our stuff, our emails. You know, our emails are great because not only do you get podcast release episodes, article releases, but as we start doing more of these webinars, we're going to start emailing them out to you. Um, we want our listeners and people that are on our emailing list to um, definitely get a first-hand peek 
to registration so you don't miss out on this stuff. So if you are um, not on our email list, go ahead. You can sign up on our website and get in on there so you you know you're first to hear about everything we do. And other than that, you know, just make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. I'm assuming if you're listening to this, you already have. But if you hadn't, have not hit that little subscribe button, make sure you're subscribed so you'll have a little notification on your phone when our new episodes release. Great. And it's been going real well. I've been really, we're, we're going on a year and a half now. Yeah, it's, going on a year and uh, a half. How many pod? How many podcasts we got now? Seventy something. Yeah, sixty-five, six. I don't even count anymore. I, don't very, know. I have to very, look up. Uh, I have to look up when I uh, upload the podcast what number our previous one was. So mm-hmm. I uh, keep it in uh, in sequential order. But yeah, things are going great. It's been a year and a half, and we have a lot of things going on. It's 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 excellent. And the feedback's so great from everybody out there, and we we so appreciate the uh, the time you take out of your day to uh, listen to us. And it's just, it's thrilling to be able to, to give you information and, and we enjoy doing it. So it's a perfect thing. So listen, go, right. uh, you, Mr. B, go uh, shoot some twilights and uh, I'm going to go and, and uh, finish up my editing session. And uh, whatever you do, though, go out and shoot some spaces. This episode of Shooting Spaces has been brought to you by hdphotohub.com. Helping your real estate photography business grow and stay on the cutting edge. Just upload your photos and your clients will get a property website, social media flyers, and videos all automatically. Register today at hdphotohub.com using referral code shooting spaces and you get your first property marketing kit absolutely free. HD Photo Hub is where great photos become a powerful marketing kit. Again, that's hdphotohub.com. This has been Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. Subscribe to the show and don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow Rich and Brian on social media and at their website, shootingspacespodcast.com.